check it. More. More what? Them things. Ah, oh, lovely fireworks. Mum, it's an alien invasion. Of course it is. I'm killing them. I'm killing them straight. Let's get tooled up, blood. Attack the Block is a movie about a gang of British teenage kids who protect their apartment complex building from an alien invasion. It doesn't get lured into a happy home with Reese's Pieces. It gets dealt with the way you would get dealt with if you attacked the character of Moses, who's the main character of our film. Well, Moses is a strong and silent character, a character that is more internal than external. He's um, very, um, he cares about his gang, he cares about his family. And um, we meet him at a point where he's trying to make two decisions, whether to go on the right or wrong path. And, all of that is just interrupted by this big alien invasion where he has to find the good in himself and get his samurai sword at arm's length and defeat these savage beasts. Yeah, strictly hood. You know this movie is executive produced by Edgar Wright who directed Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz and Scott Pilgrim and I told him I was going to do a movie with a cast of young actors who'd never been on screen before, with night shoots, with creature effects, uh, with stunts, with explosions. Um, and a dog. <laughs> so basically, he, he said, Joe, you're, you know, you're doing everything that you shouldn't do. You're making it as hard as for yourself as, as possible. And um, that made me scared, but it also made me excited because I knew if we pulled it off, we'd be doing stuff that people didn't usually attempt to do. And that included the monsters as well, you know, the design of the creatures. Because when we were raising the money, the first thing they asked was, you know, yeah, this is a good idea. I can see this movie as a, like a 20, 30 million pound production, but how are you going to do this for the kind of medium budget that we would raise? So yeah, we ended up using this hopefully quite innovative technique. And it's the technique for the creatures is based on memories of rotoscope. When I was a kid, I went to see Ralph Bashke's Lord of the Rings, and I went to see uh, an exhibition about it on a, on a barge in the Thames, and it, it showed how rotoscope worked. They shot live action on an empty set, then they paint over the live action and it becomes kind of a contemporary version of, uh, like an, an, an old version of motion capture. And I thought, well, they've never blended that with actual live action actors before. And that's kind of what we're doing with lots of other enhancements. But it is a technique, a visual technique, that I don't think anyone's tried before. Mm. There are animatronic elements, there are puppetry elements, and there are animation elements. This is kind of a comic book movie and we approached it visually like a graphic novel. But I really think these aliens are unlike anything you've seen before. You know, we made a very deliberate attempt to put something new on screen. Maybe there was a party at the zoo and a monkey shagged a fish. As a film goer, sometimes I feel that monsters in movies are quite similar. You know, a dragon from Harry Potter could wander into Cloverfield and you wouldn't really know the difference. And I love, I love Empire Strikes Back. You know, I love um, Gremlins and E.T. obviously. And those were practical effects. They were puppetry and they got a more organic, a uh, kind of human, authored feel to them. I used to like drawing monsters. I used to like drawing creatures I'd seen, and you try drawing a Harry Potter dragon, you know, you need a fine art degree. In, in a way, Attack the Block is a reaction to other movies that have portrayed these kids as kind of, um, you know, bestial and feral and animalistic, you know. Certain movies have a very negative portrayal of those kids, so we start with that negative portrayal, but this event actually gives the kids a chance to show that they're dimensional, rounded human beings. And um, we took care to, to show that they're proud of where they live. And there's a, a sci-fi beauty to where they live. You know, one of the things that interested me about that architecture was that it was built, you know, after the Second World War and in the 50s and 60s in a spirit of massive optimism, you know. And, and cinematically, that kind of architecture in Metropolis or Logan's Run or Clockwork Orange, it's seen as futuristic and optimistic and aspirational. And I wanted to bring back that sci-fi feel. You know, we treat our tower block as if it's the Nostromo or the Nakatomi Plaza or the Poseidon or something. It's a, it's a science fictional space. And, uh, you know, I think, I think well, I did a lot of research for this movie and talking to kids who live in those places, they love the architecture, they love bombing across those walkways on their bikes, they love chasing down the corridors. So our, our, our block might as well be a spaceship, that's how we approached it.